Okay, all right, we're recording now. Okay, so hello everybody, welcome. My name is Carolina and I'm a career advisor uh, at the Experiential Learning Hub at the University of Guelph, focusing on working with students from the Ontario Agricultural College. Today we are continuing along with a series of career spotlights that we have started in our department in the last academic year. Um, and so basically we're videotaping uh, interviews with individuals working in careers that are of interest to our students and alumni to help you learn more about these career paths. With me today is Nicole Campbell, ruminant nutritionist with Floridale Feeds. Um, Nicole is a University of Guelph graduate from the Bachelor of Science in Animal Biology program, as well as a Master of Science by coursework in Animal Biosciences with a focus on calf nutrition. Thank you, Nicole, for being here with us today to answer some questions for anybody that's interested in animal nutrition as a possible career path. Um, so, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Not a problem, happy to be here. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, I'm just gonna jump into the questions and hopefully uh, what's gonna turn out to be a really insightful conversation um, and hopefully to help others who are interested in this career path. So thank you. And to start off, Nicole, if you can just tell us a little bit about your career journey and how you came about uh, pursuing this career path, what made you decide to get into this field and complete the programs that you have completed in your undergrad as well as your master's? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, when I entered into my undergrad, I wanted to be a vet, uh, like many people, and I decided through coursework um, and own, my own personal experiences that being a vet just wasn't for me. Um, and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do after that, but I started taking nutrition courses, which are a requirement with the animal biology degree, and I just absolutely loved the classes. So I took as many nutrition courses as I could in my undergrad, and then that led me to uh, pursuing my master's in animal nutrition. Um, and from there, I knew I wanted to work with dairy cattle, um, so I applied to jobs in that field. So somewhere along the line there, did you discover that you would need ultimately a master's degree to become an animal nutritionist? It's not necessarily required, um, but it is recommended. And I felt that the additional education kind of focusing more on the animal nutrition and the um, improving and intensifying my experience within it would be beneficial for me. Okay, I understand. Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about what somebody in your role, a ruminant nutritionist, what does that exactly mean and what do you do in a typical day? So the thing I love about being a ruminant nutritionist is no day is the same. So today, for example, I'm in the office working on programs for dairy farmers with updated forage samples, but other days I might be on the road um, visiting farms to help uh, troubleshoot problems or weight tape cows. Um, so every day is a little bit different. I might be taking forage samples one day. Um, it all just kind of depends on the time of year and what's happening on farm. Okay. So how, like every day you have a little bit of office time as well as time on the road, or is it very depending on the day mostly? It's very depending on the day, but I'd say I'm at least on my computer for a minimum of an hour, um, either before I'd hit the road or afterwards as things come up during the day. Uh, there might be some days where I start my day on the road visiting farms and then when I get home or get a break then I would go back on and uh, finish any work that needed to be done any formula updates that needed to be done for customers or anything like that okay is it a typical nine to five type of job definitely not um so <laughs> um like I'm sure a lot of people are aware farming is not a nine to five job and so you're on I'd like to look at it as you're on a team with a vet and the farmer and so sometimes things happen on a weekend or in the evening and a producer will call you because they have a question or something you have a problem that they need your help with. Um, or sometimes they need feed the next day. So you need to make sure that everything in the, their program is up to date and correct for them for that feed. Um, so, so sometimes it isn't, sometimes it is. It just kind of, again, depends on the day. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense for sure with regards to the farming industry being the way that it is, obviously. <laughs> so what was one thing that surprised you in the early days of your career of this of this role specifically? Was there anything that you kind of went, oh, I didn't know I'd be doing this or I didn't know this was a, an aspect of the job? Um, I think the just how much information there is out there and how many different aspects of room and nutrition there is in terms of 
you know, people can do their masters on one specific aspect of a dry cow, for example. So it's knowing that there's just so much wealth of information you can constantly be learning, which is something that really attracted me to the job as well, is that I always have the opportunity to learn and grow and improve, which I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that you attend some workshops or events or professional development? Is that a regular occurrence for you? When you say ongoing kind of learning, what does that look like in your job? Yeah, so um, it kind of varies. So there's a little bit of self-taught ongoing learning. So I'll read current journal articles and popular press and things like that just to keep myself up to date with what's going on both academically and in the industry. And then there's also lots of conferences that um, nutritionists will attend. And then there's also some online programs that you can do as well that are a bit specific. So for example, um, I'm taking a reproductive online course just to refresh um, some of those um, knowledge bases that I have. Okay, awesome. So there sounds like there's a lot of variety in opportunities to kind of continue to develop yourself, which is great. So what would you say is the best part of what you do? Um, I really love working with people and the animals. So it's kind of the best of both worlds for me. So I really enjoy working with the producers and kind of getting to know them and their farm and their cows because they're all, everyone is sort of different. And then I also enjoy getting to work both with the animals too. And then with my team at Floridale Feed Mill um, and learning from each other. Nice. Yeah, a nice balance of both. That's definitely ideal. What is the most difficult aspect for you? Um, I think when, and I think everyone says when there's a problem. <laughs> um, so like I said, I like to look at it um, that, you know, being an nutritionist is part of uh, being part of a team on farm. So when the producer is having problems, you know, as when you, your team is having problems, you really want to fix that and you want to make sure things are going well. Um, so I think that would be kind of the hardest part is when there is something happening and you want to figure out what's going on and um, cows are kind of their own individual creatures so sometimes it's not as black and white as you would think it would be so it's a little bit of a puzzle sometimes which is what I enjoy but also can be um, hard if it's not as straightforward as you would like it to be. Mm -hmm. So does that usually involve working with multiple individuals to kind of narrow down what the problem and solution would be? Yep, so um, it could be depending on what's going on. It might just be strictly a nutrition issue and we address it. Um, like, for example, there could be mycotoxins in their feed or something like that that we send out for testing, and that's pretty a pretty straightforward nutrition problem. It could be more of a, a herd health problem that has a nutrition tie-in. So in that case, we'd work closely with the vets as well and the farmer in sort of a team setting to try and troubleshoot and resolve anything that's going on. Okay, so from multiple angles, really, that you come at it. Yeah. Yes. What is something that most people don't realize about this career path or don't know or don't or don't understand maybe that you have to clarify often? Um, I think from an outside non-agriculture perspective, a lot of people are surprised that a room and nutritionist is a career. Um, and I myself didn't really know that there was so many varying nutrition careers out there. Um, I knew that there was a registered dietitian for humans, but you know, there's poultry nutritionists, there's monogastic nutritionists, swine, like there's so many different varying aspects of nutrition and they're so specialized. Um, so I think that that um, can be surprising to people that you can focus just on one species and it can be that specialized and that um, you need to know so much information as a nutritionist mm -hmm. as well. Can you clarify, that's really interesting, can you clarify about how people can decide or get into a specialty? So you said like you completed a master's degree in animal nutrition. Is it then that you specialize mostly or is there other things you do outside of that? At, at what point do you kind of start to specialize and go in one direction? Um, so for me, I decided that I wanted to do ruminant, specifically dairy cattle when I took um, the undergraduate um, dairy cattle nutrition course. Um, so I would I took my master's nutrition courses with people in wildlife nutrition, poultry, monogastic nutrition. Mm. And so you kind of specialize um, when you're doing your project. So whether you're doing a coursework or a thesis based masters, right. that project is kind of where you would start to specialize a bit more. And there is lots of opportunities within your master's programs with papers and group discussions and that sort of thing to kind of uh, specialize more on your species while still learning about other um, aspects of animal nutrition. 
Okay. Just related to that, I'm curious, how easy would it be for somebody to pivot from one species to another in that case? Um, Let's say you wanted a bit of a career change, but not a total change. Is that pretty easy to do, do you think? Or um, I think it depends on what age group you're looking at. So prior to my work at Floridale, I was working for a company called Grover Nutrition, and they specialize in young animal nutrition. And young animals have fairly similar or it's not reduction, sorry, um, digestive tracts. Um, so that's a little bit easier to pivot. So I did actually work with all species, agriculture, pet, and um, zoonotic as well. Um, as you kind of get to that older stage and the digestive tracts change, it does get a little bit trickier, but it's not impossible to do. It's just you'll definitely have to kind of dive in, and learn a lot more. But in terms of um, poultry and swine, I have some colleagues that do both. Um, and I have some colleagues that do both um, cows and sheep and goats as well because they have similar, um, they're small ruminants, they have similar digestive systems. Okay, that's interesting. That's definitely a specialized knowledge for somebody in your field. I would have never thought about that, but it makes <laughs> a lot of sense when you explain it. What, um, so what personal qualities or abilities do you think are most important? If you had to pick two or three, what personal qualities or abilities are important to be successful in this type of job? Um, I would say um, communication, being really good at communication is a big skill to have both with the producer and with your fellow teammates as well um, that you're working with uh, on the job. Um, I would say a good kind of understanding of you know, how computer systems work because we use a lot of formulation software and things like that. Um, so, which is fairly, you, it can be taught. Um, I'd say those are kind of two big ones. So just being able to look at things with a scientific eye, but also being able to take that step back and look at the whole picture as well. And when you're talking about communication skills, is that a combination of being able to communicate orally with individuals and explain things? Is it also written means? What do you do? Do you do more of one versus the other? Is it pretty even? Um, I'd say it's pretty even between the two. So um, communicating with other people, being um, talking to the farmer and taking what you've done in your computer system and explaining it to them. So, you know, you're taking your formulation and you're telling them what you've done and why you've done it to help improve production or troubleshoot a problem. Um, and then I do do some write-ups for customers in terms of some information that they might be curious about. We also produce a monthly newsletter as well. So nutritionists and salespeople will um, write up articles for those as well. So it's kind of a bit of a combination of both. Mm -hmm. That's a nice variety to have as well. Do you ever have to present to large audiences? Um, I haven't in this role. I have in previous jobs. Um, when it's not uh, COVID times, we do host um, meetings for producers where um, a nutritionist might discuss a current or popular topic. Okay. And speaking of COVID, um, how has your industry been impacted and your, your career personally been impacted by COVID? And secondly, what do you anticipate happening going forward? Is there any sort of trends shifting? Can you speak a little bit to that? Um, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to work throughout the entire pandemic. Um, things have changed a bit in just in terms of office flows. So it's myself and another nutritionist that are in the office kind of manning the you know phone calls we get and stuff like that about questions for stock feeds and that sort of thing and then we also support um in terms of setting off lab samples and um feed mixing charts and that for external staff and then the remainder of the staff have been working from home um i can still go on a farm but obviously following all covid guidelines masks six feet distance and only going on farms when invited. So that does impact things like cold calling, which is a portion of obviously um, being a nutritionist and a salesperson and is, you know, trying to get business and grow your business. Um, so that sort of um, has been a little bit difficult to navigate, just not, you know, non-COVID times, you could just drive up a laneway and chat with a farmer, whereas now it's uh, invite only um, and mm -hmm. just, maybe not getting to know my um, colleagues as well as when we would all be in the office together, go out for lunch or anything like that. 
Right. Do you see things kind of staying this way for a while or do you know if things if there's any changes that are going to be permanent? Is it too early to tell? What do you think about the future? Um, I think it's probably too early to, to, to tell. In an ideal world, the office would open back up and, um, you know, we'd be able to all mingle again. Um, in terms of the day to day office stuff, it hasn't changed astronomically besides wearing masks in the office and not um but and keeping our distance but um it will definitely be interesting just to see how um things change and evolve um going forward and what um kind of policies stay in place yeah it's definitely a world of up and down right now for everybody so it is hard yeah. to predict in a lot of the times yeah so i wanted to just switch a little bit focus maybe not completely switch but just um, with my role being the career advisor focusing on the students in the Ontario Agricultural, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Ontario Agricultural College, um, I received many, many questions about, you know, wanting to work with animals as a career path, not necessarily wanting or being able to pursue the veterinarian path. What else is there? Um, and a large focus of a lot of students I deal with has to do with their desire to really be around and interact with animals as much as possible. I'm curious if you can speak to uh, the role of, of a nutritionist and yourself, how much interaction with animals do you do you have? Um, are you kind of happy with that? Are there is there more in other areas of nutrition versus the one that you're working in? Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so um, I'd say that I'm pretty happy with the level of interaction with animals that I get. Um, it's kind of... Um, depending on your customer's needs as well. But I'd say I get on farm um, at least once or twice a week, if not more than that. Um, and then depending on what's going on at one of my farms, I might be weight taping cows or calves. So I'll be physically wrapping a tape around them. So I'm obviously interacting a bit more where other times I might be in the farm, but I might be looking at manure or something like that or the feed bunks. Um, I think it really depends on um, which livestock species you're working with. So something like swine or poultry, they tend to have uh, more heightened biosecurity. Um, so you can't obviously go into as many farms mm -hmm. and the protocols are a lot different for entering into those farms. I don't have to shower in or shower out um, to necessarily enter a dairy barn, but I do obviously either wear protective boots or I bring um, like a disinfectant cleaning solution to ensure that my boots are clean. So that way I'm obviously not um, aiding in that biosecurity um, carry, carrying loop um, and ensuring the safety and protection of all the farms that I go on. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so you would say like about once or twice a week, you might be going out and getting to interact with and be around animals and that fulfills some of that need or desire you might have had. I remember you mentioned you were interested in being a vet once upon a time <laughs> as well. Um, okay, so curious about are there any professional organizations, associations, groups, workshops, events, anything that you would encourage those interested in this type of career path to kind of um, get involved with or check out as they're trying to decide if this is something that's suitable for them? Um, so in terms of things that non like students can do or master students can do, um, there aren't really any organizations that I'm super familiar with. There is the Animal Nutrition Association of Canada, which uh, nutritionists uh, will be part of and feed companies will be a part of, and they hold conferences every year. Um, However, I would recommend um, if anyone is considering um, potentially working with dairy cattle, for example, is um, trying to find an on-farm job. Um, a lot of producers are very helpful and keen on sharing their knowledge with students, regardless of whether or not they've grown up on a farm. Um, and I'd also recommend potentially reaching out to a nutritionist or someone in the career that you um, want to work in and seeing if they would let you job shadow them or if you could just pick their brain as well because that can give you a, a good idea um, yeah for sure that's something that we talk to students about all the time i'm always i feel like it's on repeat i always say i don't work in this career so you might want me to have all the answers but you really need to talk to the people that do the job themselves to really determine if this is a good fit what's a typical day like the types of questions that we're talking about today um, are there any 
publications or newsletters that you subscribe to that you find helpful to keep you updated with the industry itself? Um, so the Journal of Dairy Science obviously always has some really good articles in it. And I do read the Progressive Dairyman um, every month as well. And then um, just checking out websites. And I do use Twitter a fair bit as well because a lot of information is shared on there, um, especially in the agriculture industry. So there is some good information that can be found as well. I love that you mentioned that. That's something that I've learned over the course of my career of being, especially with the OAC focus that I've taken on, is that once I discovered just how much is on Twitter, it's really not, I was never really a big user of Twitter, but now I find um, professionally, it's so helpful. I find yes. out about all kinds of, you know, events and issues and topics just right on there. So I think that that's some really great advice that I'm trying to incorporate into a lot of our workshops as well right now is just suggesting, you know, if you want to see what's happening in an industry that you're interested in, try going on Twitter and just following and reading what people are talking about. Really great advice there. Thank you. Is there anything else that you would recommend students interested in this career path um, who really don't know much about it do that we haven't talked about today or get involved in? Um, I can't think anything off the top of my head. I would say, yeah, just taking, if you like nutrition, taking as many diverse nutrition classes as you can, because um, that'll kind of give you an idea of what you're passionate about if you find something really interesting versus having a hard time getting through the course. So maybe that's not the species for you. Um, I think even talking to your professors as well, a lot of them, have really great contacts within the industry. So if they haven't um, necessarily worked in that field or have experience in that field, they might have a close contact that does. And they're always really helpful in making introductions that way. And um, they can, I've used many of my professors as um, career guides and mentoring with questions that I have as I've kind of started out into my career. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. They definitely are some of the industry experts that we have access to as students here, right? So definitely useful connections to take advantage of. Yeah, thank you. That's great. All right. Well, that's all the questions that I have today. And I, I think that that was really helpful to help students get an understanding of this career path. So thank you again for joining us and for sharing your insight with us. I'm sure that uh, students watching this will find this really informative to help them move forward with deciding if this is a suitable career path. So thank you again for your time. And I wish you lots of health and success going forward. Um, and uh, I will stop the recording now. Thank you so much.